It's been a couple weeks now since the amazing historic launch. What surprised you the most about the journey? I think just in general, the, the biggest surprise probably for both of us was just how different the rocket felt than what we had experienced with shuttle. I mean, we expected some of that to be different just because it was a liquid fueled rocket and the shuttle had solid rocket boosters. So that was going to be different, but it certainly was a great ride. It was just different, uh, very exciting. Uh, all in all, I would say that was the, the first big highlight. And then the second one was, was getting to space station and uh, seeing three smiling faces when we came through the hatch. It was uh, just great to see those guys. And I, I think they were happy to see us to get a, you know, get a little change of scenery on board station and a little bit more help. Now, Bob, we know you've been busy training for an upcoming spacewalk. Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing during that walk? And at this point, you know, you're a veteran spacewalker. So what is your favorite part about a spacewalk? We'll be changing out all of the batteries on one of the channels on the space station. Um, from my perspective, having done a few spacewalks and uh, being a veteran, I, I really look forward to the, the views of the Earth when we get a free moment. And, and this time there'll be a Dragon vehicle pointed on the forward end of the space station instead of the space shuttle. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that something new, that new view that I can capture and share with the world. Some might say that the most dangerous part of the mission still lies ahead, the journey home. And this time, you guys won't be landing on a runway. When you land back on Earth, you'll be splashing down in the ocean. What are you anticipating the ride back home to be like? And are you guys at all nervous? No, I don't think we're nervous. We watched the Demo-1 flight, the test flight, the uncrewed test flight, and uh, the vehicle performed very well. We've seen the in-flight abort test, and the vehicle performed well again. We have full confidence that the vehicle will perform just like it's supposed to. That being said, it's a, it's a completely different entry profile than what we are used to or have been used to in the space shuttle. We'll land in the water, as you said. We'll land under parachutes. Uh, much more dynamic entry. There'll be much higher G's and, uh, you know, that's just part of the unknown as to, you know, we, we have prepared for it, but uh, we can only prepare so much and, and we'll see how the vehicle does and we'll see how we do when we get back. Now, NASA's ISS program manager, Kirk Shireman, is stepping down and this comes after NASA's head of human space flight resigned in May. How do all of these changes in leadership affect you guys and the other astronauts that are currently living on the International Space Station? I think if you look at who has uh, replaced some of those positions, you'll, you'll, you'll see uh, people from within moving up and stepping into those roles and just doing an excellent job. And so uh, that's one of the, the strengths of an organization like NASA is that uh, we don't rely on a, a single individual to drive the entire uh, assessment and evaluation and, and management effort. We use a team of individuals to do that, and, and the team is uh, strong enough to be able to recognize their role in assisting that new leader and coming into their own as they take over the organization.